welcome back to the episode I hope you've all been waiting for. Well, part of it. In this two-part task, we begin to install the ever so anticipated steel beam, and you'll be shocked to know I've never done this before, but if you know me by my car channel, this doesn't stop me from having a go. these sheets are what I've just been writing on here we had a structural surveyor come around to the property about four weeks ago now and he's done some measurements and some load calculations to actually specify what size beam we need to put in to make sure the house doesn't fall down and so we can get it signed off by building control once it's done so this is basically what I have to work to and we did have an issue now the issue we had he wanted to put a 250 mil beam and because we're not tying the trusses and the floor joists into the beam it's actually going to act as a rest it's going to hang lower because we're then going to capsulate it and make it look like a, a, a rustic old looking oak um, beam going across so what happened was all the other oak beams in the house are 170 mil off the ceiling the one he wanted to put in was 251 centimeters to the bottom of the steel by the time we put the 30 mil timber cladding over it you're actually lower than the door case now i'm six foot three and i'd be having to duck underneath everything just to get just to get into the kitchen. So we've had it revised and we're now putting what we call a H-beam in, which is a shallower beam but it has a thicker web. Now by a web, if you don't know what I'm on about, I'll show you on the drawings. A web is this part of the beam. Now it's the, the thickness of the actual straight down piece from the top two lats. So the thicker the web, the more load it can take. So that's what the gauge of the beam is. And then obviously he's calculated the mass and the size and everything else. All I've got to do is measure the linear length and then we can order this, get some acros, prop the ceiling and get it in. Now to throw an even bigger curveball into the works, most people when they prop a ceiling, they settle for a nib and which is like a little pillar that's built off the wall by how much you have to rest the beam on. In this case, it's 200 mil. So there'd be a little nib stepping off and that, and then you basically lift the steel up and sit it on and it's done. Now because I want a flush wall finish, we're actually tying the steel into the gables. Now we, obviously the steel's gonna be longer than the room length, so we can't get it in here and then lift it. So we're gonna have to smash a hole through here, right outside, and we're gonna have to slide the steel all the way in. It's gonna be very awkward because you can imagine trying to slide a 5.6 meter length of steel through the house that weighs 250 kilos. It's gonna be a lot of manpower. Um, and that's, that's why it's more awkward. I know I could have sat for a nib, but then it just won't work with the way the kitchen's gonna all fall around here. I'd be scribing works off around here and I just don't think it'll look right. So <laughs> I don't make things easy, but we certainly have got a vision and I wanna follow that vision and make sure that everything sort of goes to plan. Whilst the steel was on order and the manufacturing process was well underway, I began to demolish the two walls separating the kitchen from what used to be the downstairs toilet. These two walls didn't require any propping as they were unsupportive. Now, if we fast forward a week, we join me and my dad on site with everything ready to begin this task. Finally time for this to come out. We've got the acros, we've got the steel delivered, we've got the scaffolding boards. All we need now is to get rid of this and wait for my friends to arrive next weekend to actually help me get the steel into position. But before we jump into this and you can see what I'm doing, why don't we just have a recap with the artistic impressions and see what the score is. If this is the first episode you've tuned in on, let me get you up to speed with what's happening. First of all, you may notice I've done these impressions using The Sims 4. This must be ingenuity at its finest if you ask me. The downstairs of the cottage was dark, narrow and small. By removing the supporting wall, we should open this space up. However, with it being supportive, we will need to install a steel beam, which will then allow us to remove the wall, creating an open plan living space. Now, with the snow closing in on the valley, it was time to get the scaff boards in, the acros up and screwed into place. Then, the back-breaking work will begin. On the outside, looking in, I really wasn't sure what I was getting. Between the highways, on the sea, waiting for something to get to me. I wasn't sure what I was hoping for, you see. But you act like gravity, and you're a fool. Cause you 
So the house is fully propped. We've got five acros in, uh, five down the kitchen wall and five down the other wall. We'll just go through and pat and shimmy through and I'll show you. So here's the other acros all down there. Sorry if I'm looking to the side, but all them acros are in. Check that for level mate, look at that, bang on. Bang on, is it? Yeah, on. Oh yeah, it is level, yeah. It's a good job I put them in and then, isn't it? With it all being propped, it's now time to actually smash the wall out. So we're gonna mask up and just pray to God that the house doesn't collapse. Followed what everyone said, there's 10 acros in holding this up. And we've got an extra two. If we start seeing anything dodgy, we can throw them up. Time to mask up, knock this wall out, get the wheelbarrow full and start dumping it in the garden because I've not yet organized a skip like an absolute amateur individual. So once we get the skip, we'll have to move all the rubbish again. So I should have thought ahead for that. Anyway, let's crash bang the wall up. Is it your hand? Oh, really? Oh. Is it your hand? I've done with the nail back. Oh, how? After my dad got over breaking a nail, we worked together taking this wall down, the radio was blasting, sledgehammers were swinging, and we took it in turns to ferry the rubble backwards and forwards to the end of the garden. You might be wondering why I haven't hired a skip. That's because after this episode was filmed, a local Welsh builder offered to remove the rubble as he was building a house up the road. It's also crazy how easy I thought removing this wall would be. Although it was a graft, the results would be worth it, allowing the downstairs space to be open plan, giving a quirky, quaint feel. simple as that. That was an absolute nightmare to get down. Who would have thought Thermalite breeze block and cement could be so strong. We've had sledgehammers, jackhammers on it, pin drilling the bricks and really I should have just hired a steel saw and gone right up the middle. But obviously this is all done now. We're gonna to have to wait for the steel to go in. So Mark's just walked into the shop obviously. I have to congratulate him for uh, helping out. Man and boy. So we're going to have to wait for the steel, obviously, it's in the garden, ready to go in, but we need manpower here and we also need a genie lift to lift it up into position. So, sadly, that brings us to an end and that means you're going to have to wait for the next episode to see this go in and the acros removed. So for now, see you later. I just want to take this moment to thank you all for the support you have shown in this journey. Times are difficult at the moment with the likes of COVID-19, so stay at home, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Also, a massive thank you goes out to our NHS who continue to do their absolute best. We're